Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back for another video. <clears throat> so, I'm filming this video actually really, really early on Saturday morning. Um, I'm sorry that it, this video is like late in terms of like pop culture standards, um, but Beyonce, so obviously this video is going to be about Beyonce performing at the Country Music Awards. Beyonce performed really late on Wednesday night, like super late, and it was like a surprise because like that's like Beyonce's thing is these like surprise, like surprise. And then Thursday and Friday, I was really really busy. Thursday, um, I attended a lecture, um, and I Friday I um, went to this screening um, of Thirteenth, which a lot of you guys have been asking me to review. So I, I do have a review video for. Um, 13th, Ava DuVernay's documentary that's on Netflix. I do have a review for 13th coming. Um, I did see the movie Moonlight, so you guys have wanted a video for that, so I'm working on a Moonlight review. Um, what else did I definitely want to do? I have like at least like four or five videos. I can't even like think right now. I have at least like four or five videos that I'm like working on right now. So, uh, sorry, I hit the table. So I have like a lot of like content coming. Um, and it's like hard to record videos when people decide like, hey, at 11 o'clock on a Wednesday night, I'm gonna do like a surprise performance. And I also like to film um, with some natural light, which is just like YouTube problems I don't always like I don't really care for filming in the dark like I have a light on but like I the, it's daylight and I prefer the natural light than filming in the dark so um that's just a long roundabout way of saying that is why this video is going up on Saturday you guys know I normally don't even post on Saturdays so yeah so Beyonce performed at the country and that's also probably why I sound like scratchy because this is how I sound early in the morning um, Beyonce performed Daddy Lessons at the Country Music Awards, Redneck, Rednecks Everywhere pitched a fucking fit, um, so before we even get into that and some of the really interesting cognitive dissonance involved there, I want to just talk a little bit just about, like, her performance straight up. So, I like the song Daddy Lessons, um, it's like a, an, a interesting song um I it's funny because I really do feel like in a way a seat at the table and, and lemonade are kind of like bookend they kind of like bookend and like balance each other out because like listening to daddy lessons now after listening to the dad was mad interlude with Matthew Mills talking and I'm sure that like everything in daddy lessons is not like literally something that like Beyonce grew up doing but like there are like lines on the song about how you know their dad made them tough like their dad raised them you know to be tough to like not take any shit from anybody to raise them to fight you know just raise them in this like certain way of like you know you have to be tough you have to be able to protect yourself you have to be able to watch out for yourself and watch out for your sister and and it just made me go back to like dad was mad like you know like I was angry I was very angry for years I was caught in this space between integration and segregation and racism and going to school with the threat of death every day and again that type of trauma because that is trauma you know being handed down in a way to like Solange and Beyonce intergenerational trauma in that you got to be tough like you got to be tough you gotta be, you gotta know how to fight, you gotta know how to protect yourself, you gotta know how to have, handle a gun, you know, like, these are things that, you know, will really have an impact on a person, right? So listening to, to some of the wording in Daddy Lessons just really took me back to a seat at the table and Dad was mad and, like, more of these ideas about intergenerational trauma and, and the way that things that we learn and internalize when we are children, how we grow up with those things and how that, like, impacts the way that we raise our own children and you know the, the skills that we feel like our children need to have right if you like grew up terrified over the threat of death every day from racist white people you're gonna like raise your kids in a certain way to like know how to protect themselves right really interesting stuff there um so like i like this i do like the song it's not like my favorite song off lemonade or anything like that 
Um, but I do like the song. I love that she does country because black people started country music just like we started every other popular mainstream genre in this country. Um, country music grew out of bluegrass. It grew out of blues. You know, a lot of country music themes about love and loss and and emotions and sadness you know grew out of blues a lot of the instruments that are used like a harmonica like a banjo which grew actually out of an African instrument which I'm gonna, gonna get to a little bit more in this video you know like we created that genre like we created that genre like and we created so many cultural and I've been thinking about this a lot we created so many like cultural like markers I guess of the American South because for a long time like th like that like people think of it's it's so weird right it's so weird because people think of African Americans people think of African Americans in like so many like contradictory like ways like they think of us as like being urban and like living in all the cities right but like the whole reason why African Americans even moved to the cities was the Great Migration of the early 1900s when like hundreds of thousands of black people fleed the south where we were all living you know post slavery because that's where the vast majority of us were because of plantations and so you had like hundreds of thousands of black people that were fleeing the south and the great migration for new york they were going out west to california you know like post slavery and then you know heading into post reconstruction and then headed into jim crow and lynchings and segregation so you had these like people streaming out of the south and so that's why you think of like african americans as living in cities right but at the same time it's like but like tons of african americans still live in the south like tons of us never left the south right and we lived in the south for so long we created so much of what is considered American Southern culture and like I said I've been thinking about this a lot because like I, I I've literally been really thinking about this for like months because one day like months ago I was watching Chopped Food Network show Chopped I don't know if you guys watch that and they had this like really really country like white woman on there that had this like really heavy accent and her name was you know like Barbara Jean or something and she's like you know I'm from like Nashville or wherever and I, she cooked so she one of the so ch chopped for anyone that doesn't know or hasn't seen it is where you have to cook um, three courses, um, an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert using mystery ingredients that are in a basket. You have no idea what's in there, and you just have to like make it work in like twenty or thirty minutes. And it's like elimination rounds, so every round somebody gets cut. So they had this like country lady on there, and she like opened up her basket, and her basket had like pig parts in it. So she was like, "I'm gonna make chitlins, right?" She goes, I'm going to make chitlins, even though white people be like chitterlings or whatever. I'm going to make chitlins, right? So she cooks them, she makes them, and like the people are eating them, the judges are eating them, and they start, and they say like, oh, and like chitlins are like an American Southern, like mainstay, and isn't it so interesting how like, you know, food, food that's like initially linked to like poor, like poor people and like poor populations and like the poor population of the American South is like now becoming like trendy foods. Like, like you can go into a restaurant now and order like chitlins and like collard greens and pork rinds. And that's now becoming seen as like trendy, which is a form of food gentrification, right? Of, of people gentrifying food and making it into something trendy and expensive and something that the original people that were eating it can no longer even, you know, afford because now they, they, the, the higher ups, you know, up the food chain have elevated this food. But anyways, the whole time they were talking, I'm like, I'm, I'm like dying inside. I'm like watching like, so, so no one is going to say African American like influence. Nobody. I've heard American South. I've heard poor people food. I have not heard a single person out of like the three professional judges sitting on this panel or this or Barbara Jean. I haven't heard anyone mention that like chitlins are like, they're not just like American South, like they're African, like that's an African American like creation because like 
the slaves would only get the nastiest fucking thrown away parts of the pig but what did we do we took those lemons and we made lemonade like we do everything else just like we fucking took our hardships in life and turned it into the blues and turned it into bluegrass and turned it into country music and 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 i'm just literally watching like how they like no one is gonna say african-american influence nobody okay all right and it's the same thing with country music and it's just the same thing with like so many like i said like especially like american south mainstays because it's like people have like wiped from memory that african-americans were a huge and still are a huge part of the south even though like on one level like you know that like niggas live in miami you know that like niggas live in atlanta like you on one level like you know people niggas live in texas like beyonce's from texas like you know this on one level that like a lot of african americans live in the south but like on another level there's this like pop culture idea of black people as only living in the city in in, in new york and, and so it's like a weird like like i said it's, it's like a weird dissonance happening um and so, and that is exactly what you see when you see someone like Beyonce perform a country song and you see people lose their shit because they have forgotten and they, or, or they never even learned that black people created country, just like we created rock and roll, just, just like we created every single popular genre, like African Americans had a hand in that shit. So Beyonce's performance herself was, it was okay. <laughs> It was good in the sense that every single one of Beyonce's performances is good because she just has so much technical talent. Like she has a, a, a really good voice technically, like she has a beautiful voice and she knows how to use it as an instrument. So like there's really no such thing as like a bad Beyonce performance technically. Um, but like I've said before, Beyonce is of the school of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So it was a predictable performance the most unpredictable thing about the performance was that she had the dixie chicks come out and sing backup now i like the dixie chicks i do like the dixie chicks i love their rendition of landslide it's a beautiful song it's like one of my favorite favorite songs um they're they make some pretty um politically radical statements um they said like fuck george bush like well over a decade ago now and they got blackballed from the country music music industry for that um they're on their first american tour in like literally years because they literally got like blackballed for you know speaking their minds and being outspoken as women from texas who condemned our president who was also from texas and i think they that the main one natalie might have like said something like he makes us ashamed to be from texas and you know other white people didn't like that it was very like oh you're unpatriotic it was like very like Kaepernick like oh you're unpatriotic and you know you have to like blindly worship and adore this country and the president otherwise you can't perform country music anymore and they just like kicked them out of the fold basically and um they've been on an American tour for like a few months now and after Lemonade came out they did a cover of Daddy Lessons and I think they've been doing it um on their on their circuit or whatever so I wasn't that surprised to hear that they were doing back the backup for Beyonce because they know this like they know the song and that was pretty cool and that was like really interesting to kind of see them all harmonizing together and I like the Dixie Chicks and they can sing um but like Beyonce had like her regular hair and she wore this dress um this dress that like was like the exact same color and like shape and silhouette as the dress that she wore to the um the Met Gala it was like this flesh colored like body contrast with like the big like these poofy sleeves which was the exact same shape as the dress that she wore on the red carpet of the CMAs except that one was like white with these like blue flowers with the body cut like body skimming dress. I'm not gonna say body con but like body skimming dress with these like big sleeves like she like like I said like Beyonce gets into a groove and she definitely feels like if it's not broke don't fix it um and that's boring <laughs> and these dresses are boring and this hair is boring and I wish she would have done something else like it's the CMAs like you could have like really taken that in a bunch of different directions instead of just wearing like your you know uniform 
but that's how she feels comfortable, so whatever. Um, I thought the dress, I didn't like that. I didn't like the dress. I don't like these dresses. I didn't like the dress she wore at the CMAs. I didn't like the dress she wore at the Met Gala. Like, I don't like these dresses. Like, the silhouette is flattering. I'm about to get, like, fashion on y'all because we all know I like fashion. I mean, like, the silhouette is flattering because, like, Beyonce has a great body. But, like, right now, her either her two options are she's wearing, like, no pants. She's wearing these, like, long sleeve like, leotards. Or she's wearing these, like, um, you know, see-through floor length you know, body skimming dresses that are either sparkly or have these, like, big poofy sleeves. Like, you can, like, time it. Like, you can, like, set a watch by what Beyonce's gonna wear. Um, so, I, like, I thought that was boring. I was like, oh, look, another, like, flesh-colored, you know, tight dress with big poofy sleeves. Okay. Um, I actually really loved what the Dixie Chicks were wearing, though. They were doing, like, some... They had, like, all black on. They were doing, like, a black country, like, punk rock. They were serving me black country punk rock aesthetic. Gothic country punk rock aesthetic, which I enjoyed. Like, Beyonce could have even worn something like what she wore, like, in the Formation video. Like, like some gothic... Some black gothic. And that would have been country, right? Because, like, black gothic, you know, southern aesthetic southern gothic aesthetic is also country you know so i wish she had like pushed it a little bit further with the look and the aesthetics um i mean in the performance itself like i said it was it was cool so um the dixie chicks were my favorite part of it um and watching of course people lose their shit was just hilarious so i actually want to read you guys some stuff from a washington post article um, that I'm going to, of course, include, include in the link. But they have some really good information that I just want to read you guys. Um, the irony is that, like most all popular music today, at least part of country music is rooted in black culture. Let us not forget that one of Nashville's more famous historical spaces was Printer's Alley, home to Jimmy Hyde's Carousel Club, where country artists and bookers would come to see and often play jazz. Let us not forget either that Willie Nelson once said that Ray Charles did more for country music than any other living human being in reference to Charles's 1962 hit album, Modern Sounds and Country and Western Music. It was the first country record to sell more than one million copies, nor should we forget that DeFord Bailey, a black man born in 1899 who was a master of the harmonica, he became one of the genre's most popular musicians and helped inspire the name Grand Ole Opry for which he often played. The nickname for his style of music that mimicked dance more than classical scores was Grand Old Opry. So basically, DeFord Bailey was a black man who used the harmonica in, instead of in the way that it was meant to be used, which was to play like classical scores. He jazzed it up. He funked it up. He funkatized it, which was a word that I heard used at the lecture that I went to on Thursday. Um, and that, that lecture was talking about how African Americans have a history of, you know, taking European culture and funkatizing it and turning it on its head and turning it into something new. So you hand me this harmonica, you know, you hand me, and he talked in, at the lecture, the guy talked about jazz, he said, you know, you hand me this saxophone, which is an instrument, <clears throat> excuse me, that has, you know, Germanic roots, and he did the little burr, 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 you know, and you hand it to an African American and they're gonna funkatize it and they're gonna play you know, give them a harmonica. They're not gonna play, you know, classical music with it. They're gonna play dance music with it, you know, and that and we're gonna we're gonna transform it and we're gonna turn it into something new. And then just like we saw in Roots, you know, which I've talked about in my Roots video, then you hire, you know, a black musician to come and perform at your, you know, your white fucking shindig because, like, that's all black people are good for, is, like, waiting on white people and, you know, fucking performing for them, and then you have, like, white musicians that are in attendance that, like, hear these things that you're doing with a harmonica, they hear these things that you're doing with a saxophone, you know, these things that they've never heard before, and then they do it, you know, they mimic it, they imitate it, and then they get the credit for it, and then you forget that black people started country music, right? And then you have rednecks that are mad that Beyonce is performing at the CMAs, like, it is a vicious cycle, right? Last thing from Washington Post. Also, the banjo. 
one of the genre's most vital and enduring instruments, traces its roots back to the Akonting, I hope I'm saying that right, A-K-O-N-T-I-N-G, Akonting, a three-string West African instrument that musicologists believe was a precursor to the banjo. So again, even, even you know, the precursor to the banjo was an African instrument. And as David Whitus, the author of Chicago Blues, wrote for the Chicago Reader, much of the guitar styles seen in country come from black influences. He wrote, the black plantation musician of the 1920s led a dual life. He played blues and contemporary dance numbers for black house parties and juke joints, but was also called upon to perform at white functions. For these, he'd modify his repertoire considerably to include pop songs, vaudeville-style novelty numbers, and the folk-based ballads and dance tunes that eventually gave birth to bluegrass and western swing important precursors to modern country and western music. As the recording industry developed, what had been a relatively free exchange of musical ideas became more of a one-way street. Recorded influences were generally passed from black to white musicians to the latter's artistic and financial benefit. Just like I talk about in my, in my Adele video, you know, we're talking about non-black and especially white artists that are able to benefit from the work of black artists. Like, that's what we're talking about. Historically, like this has historical precedent and historical context. Bluegrass mandolin pioneer Bill Monroe has openly acknowledged his musical debt to a black Kentucky guitarist and fiddle player named Arnold Schultz, who apparently traveled freely in both black and white musical circles before his death in 1931. The Western swing standard, steel guitar rag, popularized by Bob Wills and his Texas Playboys, was originally recorded as guitar rag by another black Kentuckian, guitarist Sylvester Weaver, in 1920. The Beatles, Elvis Presley, you know, people that are seen as, you know, oh my gosh, this is like the pinnacle of like rock and roll and, you know, the, the pinnacle of, of, of these like quote unquote white genres. But like nine times out of ten, what these white artists did was they watched black artists, you know, they watch us and then they imitate us and then they take credit for it and then they get recorded because they're able to afford recording time recording sessions, studio time, and once it's down on wax, it's there forever, right? If, if, if Elvis Presley was, you know, traveling around, and, you know, just like they just talked about this, this fucking steel guitar rag shit that was originally recorded by, a, I mean, that was originally performed by a black, you know, black artist. You know, Elvis Presley's going around to all these, like, juke joints, and, and he's, you know, in Mississippi, because he's from Mississippi, same place as Ray fucking Trummer, Tupelo. You know, he's going around, and he's like, looking at the way that these black people dance and the way that they move their bodies and the way that they sing and the songs that they're singing but these are people that don't have fucking two nickels to rub together they can't record they can't afford to go record any of this but Elvis Presley can and then once it's recorded now it can be shipped out across the country and now it can be sent to radio stations you know now it gets it gets this the spread you know and and now Elvis Presley is called the king of rock and roll like and that is the way that the music industry in particular, I mean, all of American culture, pop culture, especially like fashion and music, but the music industry <clears throat> in particular, that is how it operates. Money and payola and appropriation and the stealing of culture and genres from African Americans and the crediting of it to white people. And so that is why you had rednecks losing their collective minds when they heard that Beyonce, who is a black woman from Texas, which makes her Southern, which makes her country, which means she should be right at home performing country music, which is a genre that her people created. Which is why you have rednecks losing their collective minds when they hear that Beyonce is performing at the Country Music Awards. Some country music artists, I don't know, t Trit, last name Trit, T-R-I-T-T, -T, I don't know, white man Trit, was like, well, country music doesn't need pop artists to sell tickets because they're trying to say like, oh, that like country music and like the CMAs is like dying. And that's like the only reason why they even like had Beyonce 
And I'm sure the ratings were good, were awesome because so many of us African Americans tuned in just to watch that. I didn't. I watched it online because I feel like you can catch anything on social media. But like, how many people watched it just because? Beyonce was performing Gabby Douglas was there on the red carpet and someone like asked her like oh do you like country music she was like no but Beyonce is gonna be here so like that's why I'm here so it's funny too because like when it's when it's switched right like I've talked about in my Shane Moisture video when it's switched you're expected to cater to like a white audience and a white clientele it's the same thing they say about movies right like oh they have to cast Scarlett Johansson because movies are meant to make money and White people are the only people with money, <laughs> you know, like, white people are the only people that go see movies. But when it's switched and they use a black artist like Beyonce as the draw, all of a sudden it's white people are like, well, we don't need your money. We don't, we don't need your ratings. We don't need to, like, cater to a black audience for ratings. That's only something that people are supposed to do for us. You got the game fucked up. And it's just, like, really interesting to, like, see all these dynamics at work and like see all these dynamics play out and see how it like makes people feel like Beyonce being at the country music awards right they feel like she doesn't belong there even despite the like history of country music as a black art form it's pretty fucking amazing how really deep the roots of like racism go and cultural appropriation in this country and erasure and revisionist history you know even in our pop culture um so that was just really interesting. And you always have people that say like, well, I don't understand why Beyonce was there because you don't see country music artists and pop artists and white artists getting invited to the BET Awards. And it's like, you clearly haven't watched the BET Awards because they have white people on there all the time. Didn't Sam Smith win like the new, the breakout artist last year or year before that? And like, he's a white guy. They have white people on there all the time. Black people are too accepting. Like we're overly accepting. We will accept anyone. And no one, but no one else will accept us. Isn't it funny how that works? Isn't it funny how that works? And then the first thing they want to say is, oh, but you guys wouldn't accept us. No, 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 sweetie. But yeah, so uh, Beyonce, did you guys watch it? What did you think? What did you think of the performance? Uh, let me know in the comments. Of course, there will be links in the description box. Move for thought as always. See you guys next time. Peace.